Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm super pumped because I'm going to be sharing with you guys my five favorite features of the Sony a7 IV. I've been using this camera for about two months now and I've absolutely fallen in love with so many parts of the camera, but specifically these five reasons. So let's get into it. If it's your first time here at the channel, my name is Maddie Collins and we talk about everything photo, filmmaking with an emphasis on gear. All right, so reason number one and first up is the hybrid capabilities of this camera. I've absolutely fallen in love with the fact that I can do solid filmmaking with it, with these amazing codecs in this camera, but also that it has a back illuminated 33 megapixel sensor, which is just incredible in low light situations and that 33 megapixel sensor is really good for cropping in and post. So I love the versatility of this camera and how it's truly a hybrid, um, especially when compared to like the FX3 or the A7S3. Those are still fine for photography, but this is truly, in my opinion, a hybrid camera, and I love this. Let's talk now about reason number two. I absolutely love the 4K60 on this camera, and I know that that's gonna be a little bit controversial for some people out there because yes, um, it does come at a crop, but I still love that it has 60 frames per second. And a lot of us, I think, get hung up on the fact that like it doesn't have 120 frames per second or it doesn't have zero crop 4K 60. And while those features would be really nice, I don't think, well, someone in my case where I shoot for fun, but I also shoot professionally, there are workarounds for that 4K 60 crop, whether it's lens selection or using your feet, simply moving uh, your feet instead of getting a wider angle lens. So there's a lot of ways that you can get around this. I love the fact that it has 4K. I love that it's 60 frames per second. And we don't always need 120 frames per second, even though a lot of YouTubers like hype it up and it does look silky smooth, like it is amazing. But what would that cause? More overheating issues potentially. And so for me, I love the 4K 60, even though yes, that's a little bit controversial of a feature to add to this list. All right, reason number three is lens selection. So as you guys know, I came from the Canon system and I was stuck to choose between between RF glass, which is kind of absurd right now, or EF glass adapted, which is actually not a bad deal. But to natively e-mount lenses that are third party and relatively inexpensive, I have a lot more options in focal lengths and brands that I can go with with the e-mount system. So that's what I'm absolutely loving about the Sony switch and specifically this a7 IV. Um, this will be the case for all Sony mirrorless uh, full frame cameras. So anyways, I love the lens selection and that's another reason that I'm loving this camera. If you guys are enjoying this video, please feel free to just pause this video, scroll down, give it a like. It goes a really long way in helping my channel get noticed. And I just wanna say a big thank you for all my subscribers and the ones that are helping me and joining me on this journey and are adding to the community by joining the comment section as well. And if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, I would really appreciate that as 97% of my watch time goes to people who are not subscribed to the channel. So I just wanna say I appreciate you and let's dive back in. Reason number four is a big one and I didn't realize it was gonna be this big. I thought it was just like all this spec talk that I read online about 10-bit versus 8-bit color, but it truly is fascinating. I always say and compare it to, it's like editing a JPEG image instead of like a raw image in Lightroom, something like that. Uh, as you guys know, in 8-bit color space, the colors fall apart when you try and add your unique creative style to your videos. Um, unfortunately, 8-bit colors just, there isn't enough information there in the color space for that to show nicely. But this is the first camera I've ever used and edited in 10-bit and absolutely night and day difference. Um, it's, it's so crazy the reach you can get with the colors out of this camera. So I'm absolutely loving that. The 10-bit space is amazing. There's a lot of talk that the 420 that it has and the 422 are very similar. So I'm not gonna go too in depth about that, but I do love shooting in 10-bit color space. It's been absolutely amazing, a treat so far. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is the price. So at $24.99 US dollars, this camera, I know it is expensive and it's outside of a lot of people's budget range. I understand that, but just try and compare it to the A7 S3 and what that camera is capable of. Yes, it's a more like video focused camera, whereas this one's hybrid, but it has a lot of the same video capabilities with a better photography sensor in it. So 
I am gonna say at $24.99, the price is amazing. That A7S III is $34.99 US dollars. And then there's the FX3, which is the start of the cinema line for these Sony cameras that comes in at $38.99 US dollars. So I just really think that $24.99 is a bargain price for this hybrid camera. And it's the one I would recommend to the majority of the people out there unless you primarily shoot video, in which case I would recommend either the S3 or the FX3. All right guys, so that about wraps up the video for today. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel. There are so many more reasons why I fell in love with the Sony a7 IV. If you're thinking about picking it up and you have questions or recommendations or you think I missed something that was like so important to you, just leave it in the comments below and maybe I do a part two of this. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for stopping by the channel as always and we'll see you in the next one. Maddie out. Peace.